Well, hello everybody, welcome. It's the Handyman. Uh, infamous, infamous map, I know, for many of you. Uh, this video is going to break, basically break down into two major points here. I'm going to sort of play in a more standardy, normal way with the bots. Moving to a spot that's good to hold out at. You know, pulling zombies, maybe forcing the issue by running to a corner and then pulling aggro there. I'll demonstrate and you'll see. And then just sort of slow playing the police station for the most part with the bots. By that point, the bots are going to be pretty messed up. They're going to be close to death. Where we are then going to just basically leave them behind and start speed clutching the map as if everyone on our team is dead. Because I think a lot of very common scenario for this mission is that you sort of play it in a normal way, but eventually you run out of healing items, you run out of ammo, you run out of supplies. People, people slowly die over time. You sort of end up with one person who's left to just clutch the rest of the map by themselves. So I'm going to sort of demonstrate that as well. And sort of just to blend the two worlds together. Because in theory, if you can hold out in some of these spots with bots, you should be able to do it with players as well. Hopefully you can. Ideally, this map I do think ends up being better with players than with bots if you have decent players who know what they're doing. Because in general, if you need to go from point A to point B with bots that are under pressure or being attacked by a horde, they die. And so that's going to be it for the video, is just, one, we're going to play normally through the police station, and then two, I'm going to leave them behind and sort of sh show the, ro the route. I'm still going to point out good places to hold out at, which I sort of talked about in the walkthrough video itself, but... So we'll see. Ooh, we'll take that for sure. No reason to save our money. The thing about finishing a finale is, like, who cares about our money at, on the next level? The next level is a checkpoint, so if we die, we start at pipe cleaners anyways. And you start off with a bunch of money at the next checkpoint, right? Move out. So, for this part... Getting a door here is bad RNG. We would prefer no door. We need to get out of this hallway as quickly as possible. The game is quite generous as far as spawning things when we're inside of this. They're swarming in large numbers and appear to be moving towards the station. When we're inside of this hallway. So. Unfortunately, we do have fire zombies. I'm 90% sure that I didn't shoot a cop car there. But fire zombies will trigger car alarms, and then the game will blame us for it, basically. Like, fire zombies will deal damage to a, a cop car, and then the game will go, Hey, survivors, this is your fault. But once we're outside, like, into this open area, the game, like, stops... Ah. Is like way less generous as far as spawning extra zombies. I feel. Besides, you can see that how great of a spot this is. We have so much space, so much open area. And especially with bots, the bots just need time. Like, bots just need lots of distance so that they can use their little computer brains I'll and figure this. it out. Even though we did get car alarm triggered, bots are still relatively healthy. We're still relatively. Oh, you know what I know what happened? I shot the window from really far away, and that didn't trigger the car alarm because they're bugs. Oh, okay, we have a bunch of three people joining now. That's a little silly. One thing to note too is that if your back is against the wall here, um, this cop car doesn't really do, do too much damage to you. The cop car is a little annoying in that zombies will pathfind over it and can make harder shots. Here, let me help you. Thanks, kid. Got some ammo. Now we're on the move. This map is basically broken down into. Here, you look like you need this. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you have a limited amount of time to Looks make like forward me. progress. You have a limited amount of time to complete our objective, which is kill nests. Right? The fact that this guy's standing still is messing with the bot's AI, and they're not supporting me now. And also, what the hell? Can you can you leave if you're just gonna go AFK? And then that is fun. I would like to save Holly, but <laughs> look at all these stupid bugs that are happening at the same time. I'm sorry, back for blood. I love you, man, but I need you to not do this to me. Angelo back. Glad you got my back. No! So, unfortunate turn of events for us here. Holly is acting as a buffer, though, for the wretch, at least. So, basically, at this point, I think I'm just going to have to speed run through the police station a little bit here. That guy joining and then leaving is really, really rude. I'm leaving this if you want it. Huh. What do you know? Let's go What's home. That? Right, because this whole map is just broken down into making forward progress with a limited amount of time. I owe you one. Again. And then when the horde is showing up, you get to a good place to hold out at. And then you make forward progress again. This face? Let's go, Mom. This is my grateful face. And you sort of rinse and repeat over and over and over again. Ratch! Yeah, let's go. And it seems like no matter how many zombies you kill in this lobby. At any point in time, if you leave, zombies will show up again in this lobby. No matter what. Get them, team. Get them. I'm just going to keep in mind that these things are here, but... I don't know why all these zombies got aggroed. Like, what's happening here? Why is this happening? It's like a horde triggered, but we didn't get any sort of warning. This is a good a good spot here to hold out at, actually. This room is relatively safe. A lot of the zombies will get choked up right See here, that? and we get a lot of like uh, opportunity for a lot of opportunity for, for penetration versus the horde of zombies, like bullet penetration. You sort of want a zombie to, I mean, a, a bot to stand somewhat in front. You just sort of see they clump up so nicely that you get a lot of collateral damage here. And sometimes they get choked with, like, that zombie's trying to get through the window. So. Sometimes these windows will bug the zombies out as well. Now we're on the move. The key to dealing with the police station is just not triggering a sleeper. Cocktail over here. What the fuck is going on? And I would like to. I would like to be able to. Clear the second floor of the police station before the next horde happens. Gotta stick a band-aid on this. This is a fine how do you do? We're not gonna be able to find that guy until we deal with Where the sleeper right here? That one gets me all the time. What's that? Another thing too is just keep in mind how many bullets it takes with your gun to kill these orbs. Not only is that going to save you ammo in the long run, Look there. but it's also going to save you time 
Just to know that you just one two three, one two three, and then you move on. And when you're being chased by a horde and needed and needing to destroy some of these orbs, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big help. Hold out the next ward here. You can do it here, like right here. Get this barrel a lot of the times. The other place is actually right underneath us. Going through here, this can also be a really good place to hold out. Ammo here. So either way, up here you get a little bit more wiggle room that you can sort of shoot one side and then break free and get out. Shoot one side and break free and get out. Downstairs you're sort of all in. So of course, no matter where you're at in the police station, even if we spawn down, if we're downstairs, there's actually a mutation spawn downstairs as well. That's like right next to the holdout spot. It's similar to Call to Arms. A big issue with this map is that there's so many things that will spawn zombies right next to you, and the game does not care where you're looking, where you're standing. It'll spawn mutations literally on top of you. That makes Handyman even harder as well. So at this point, Let me take care of this. we are going to leave. And zoom me, zoom. We got the nest almost popped red. open. What's left over here? Reloading. And now we're on the move. Typically, I like going right Let's first, go. but... The There's a bunch of zombies that are going to be really hard to squeeze on through. Watch your step. There's no real pathing or route that I'm going to be demonstrating here. Uh, just the fact that we need to zigzag, basically. We never want to trade health for doing these orbs in a speedy fashion, basically. So you just sort of take what you get. Or you can get it, basically. I'll take this. Go back this way. A part, a part of this movement is just you might feel tempted to go the shortest the shortest path to where you want to go. A lot of times, you know, we want as much distance as possible from things, so sometimes running longer path is better. Again, right? We don't ever want to risk taking damage to shoot one of these orbs. This is a map of attrition. Don't think this is gonna move We're trying itself. to be as healthy for as long as possible. Health is our mistake resource. The more health we have, the more mistakes we're allowed to make later on. You sort of always be alert for, for sleepers, it's hard. This is a decent holdout spot. You have two people on this ladder, two on the other. It's gonna work sometimes. One thing that I would love to do, if possible... Oh, this door's not alarmed. We don't want to get trapped here, though. So, damage that door, and, like, we call that good. Like, a little bit of damage, that's technically forward progress, right? And verticality is our friend. If we're ever running out of stamina, we can just jump up somewhere. We typically climb at about the same rate as our zombie counterparts, but... etc. One thing, too, that I want to point out a lot of times is we can jump over this aqueduct, but they can't. They will drop down, and then they have to drop down and land, and then they climb back up. So jumping over this aqueduct and making them fall through it is almost always in our favor. I don't like this. I was gonna try and shoot that door, but not good. This over here is a horrible spawn point because yeah. I mean holdout point because those are all spawn points. Over 
You don't actually really have to enter that building a lot of times. You can shoot all those orbs through the window. Making a lot of noise out there. So the generic idea that I have going on here is that we might want to like stay in one area and loop around and keep trying to kill all the things, but if you stay in one side of the map, the things that are chasing you will will, will, leave, will stay there. Well, they'll keep chasing you. Whereas if we zigzag from one side of the map to the other, it'll actually despawn zombies. Never risk it. Oh no! Huge no no. Big mistake. Big mistake on our part. Did not hear that sleeper at all. Got the jacket. Oh. Whew. Not having a stun gun. Sketchy. Very sketchy indeed. Let's see here. Let's see if we can maybe make some progress on this door. Or we'll leave. This is what one of the. Oh, yeah, I see. Oh, Hawker's not good. Because one thing that I've noticed is that no matter what, how much progress you make on this map, as far as where you go, the game is always going to be spawning idle zombies. It's just random zombies that wander about. They're pretty much always respawning. It's like an arena. So if you run from one side of the map to the other, the map that you have left alone, the side of the map that you've left alone, the game is respawning just all those random zombies that are walking around. And because those random zombies are getting respawned, it actually removes the horde that is chasing us. We actually go for this. That's faster than the pistol. Two pods left. Got a phantom bullet there, great. So no need to crawl into there. One pod left. Oh, what? Uh, okay. I don't know how he got up there. He can't climb from that side. I don't know how he was there or why he was there. We need to save one grenade for our... for that node that we just opened up. There's like pain pills and stuff in there. We do need to remember that we can go back to the opening of the police station to potentially grab more loot, more healing items. And of course, at any point in time, if we can get one of these bots picked up, that would be really, really nice. Okay, there's our first one. Uh, I, I almost never go in that room. That room is death. That room spawns zombies in it. Always a butt clencher, man. Always a butt clencher. He's just shooting from out here. The nests take quite a bit of health, or quite a bit of damage. Quite a bit of bullets. Let's sort of see where the zombies are. I think we can grab mom here. It. It's a bit of a cushion. Appreciate it. Mistakes were made. You got lucky. Right. So now we have one grenade for the final nest. Hopefully, mom is distracting them for us. Don't trigger the snitch. Don't trigger the snitch. We're receiving reports of an unusually large number of Ridden descending on your Don't location. Don't get greedy. Whatever else, you need it. to secure the armory. I need a weapon in every able-bodied person's hands. I've got it! That's <laughs> this stupid map. 
I really want to emphasize that you can do this map without having to speed clutch it. If you have three good, decent people, watch watch the walkthrough. I show some, some holdout points. I talk about a lot of the spawn points. If you can just get yourself in a good corner with three good dudes or ladies who are decent at this game, you can play this game normally. The thing that I want to reinforce that I... Th this map is really intensive as far as I, w I wish I was talking more, but it's a lot of focus. The thing that I want to emphasize that I did mention, but if you go back and forth across those two outside nests, you, you despawn the horde that's chasing you. Because the game wants to keep populating the map with random zombies. So if I leave one side of the map and the horde is chasing me, that side that I left is empty. But the game goes, hey, there's still a nest here. So let's make some more zombies in this area, etc. And But the game can only support so many zombies at a time. So it starts plucking away zombies in the horde. They disappear as they're chasing you and they sort of just get put somewhere else on the map. So keeping that zigzag will help actually remove pressure from you. And again, it's just the key is don't ever trade health for killing orbs quickly. If you're at an orb or at, an, at a node and you're shooting it and you hear something behind you, don't keep shooting the orbs and like, I'm just going to get it done. Like, just get the heck out of there. Maybe you can turn around and punch them, but just get the heck out of there. Don't trade health for orbs. And then zigzag back and forth. Because uh, so long as you can go forwards, you have open space in front of you, the zombies will never catch you. And the only thing you have to worry about is hawkers. Um, so hopefully that demonstrates a little bit how you can sort of do some opening movement, that quick right into the parking lot. That first office in the police lobby is, is decent. And there's some other decent spots as well. I demonstrated by the, actually the safe room door is a decent holdout spot. Right below it in the armory is a decent holdout spot. And that staircase is decent as well. And the map is just make forward progress, get to a holdout spot, make forward progress, get to a holdout spot. And you just rinse and repeat that over and over again. And the more efficient you are and the faster you are, um, the less hordes you end up having to face, and etc. So I hope this helps. This is a hard map, I know. Hope this helps. Uh, hope this helps. Um, and if you want to see the deck that I'm using, feel free to check out the Act 2 solo. Excuse me, Act 2 solo deck. Because um, we're sort of blending a lot of things together here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, see you in the future.